All right, so now we're playing, um, let me move my thing a little. Whoop. Now we're playing uh, Essica. Another fairly popular one, Essica. Well, I guess it's more the prismatic bridge. Don't really see myself playing Essica's side, but um, the goal of the deck is to just get Essica into play pretty quickly. So we have um, a bunch of ramp spells, a lot of like five color pseudo lands, right? We got the five thrive. I had to craft a lot of lands for this deck. A lot of these thriving groves, and I crafted the rest of the triomes that I didn't have. Um, yes, Shimmer Drift Veil. Vale. I don't like the lands that, like, when they enter, you have to pay one to keep it around and it's attached uh, for any color, or you sacrifice it or something. Those are a little sketch. Maybe I could run, like, a single copy. I could probably drop, like, I don't know, Simic Guild Gate or maybe one of these lands, but for now, that's what we're doing. And then, with this enchantment in play, you cheat out big things and creatures and planeswalkers, so... Obviously, Zatalpa, my man. I haven't played Zatalpa in 600 years, so that would be cool. If Zatalpa windmills into the board and actually does something. Ruinous Ultimatum might not belong in here, but it is more of a five-color deck than my Golos deck is, because you really want all five colors to cast this instead of getting all five colors after you cast it, you know, like Golos. So it's kind of like the opposite. You need them out sooner. But I still keep a majority of a three-color deck. Uh, not a lot of red or white cards here. While I uh, still try to get all the colors in play for Essica to come out nice and fast. So I am running uh, one of the least common colors in basics. I have one plains and one mountain. Um, have some of the other big ones. I don't even know about Thorn Mammoth. It's all right, I guess. Uh, Scholar kind of needs something else to have happened before you hit Scholar off of Essica for that to be worth it, but we'll see. And then, you know, other big random value city stuff and ramp spells. So let's see what happens. Might even take out some of these counter spells. Just slap this together. Feels like a list I'd like to play. I'm sure I'll change it a bit as we go. Be sure to like and subscribe. And let's play Magic the Gathering. You can tap specific lands to cast a spell. <laughs> uh -huh. Sometimes that auto tapper, it'll get you. It'll get you good. I feel like the game's getting laggy. I don't know what that's about. I had this problem the other day as well. The camera's all wonky. I gotta stop fiddling with my camera and keep it in the same spot. Okay, so we have a good, good, diverse mana right here, so I like this. And then we have Chromatic Lantern, so Sandus is weird looking. We're against the Nicol Bolas, though. So once Essica resolves, I think we're good. Just have to, like, do that. They don't really have a lot of enchantment removal. Um, I'll end step the Growth Spiral. Oh, Field of the Dead. Okay. Uh, let's play this. I don't have to crack it right now. Alright. Now I will I'll crack it for Basic Forest. Alright, we got the colors. That's really nice. This is a good game one. So far. So we can Migrations Path. Yeah, the game is like choppy. I don't know what's going on. Get a... Oh, we win. <laughs> Cool. We take those. I just launched the game, too. And, like, I just turned my computer on. I don't know why the game's choppy. Yeah, I don't know. Nothing else is running, either. The only thing on my computer running right now is the stream thing and the game. Okay, Earl seems like a really, really good matchup, depending on how many counter spells they have. Because they're not doing anything super fast. This is a good Thought Eraser hand, but it's not a good rest of the hand. It's like a turn three Thought Eraser. Ah, we're going to keep it. Uh, 
All right, no one drop, please, please. Oh, thank God. Oh no, we can't thought eraser. Right, I didn't even realize that till I played the castle. For some reason, I thought I could. I don't know what what that's about. Okay, well, I guess I can now. Um, blue and red or white, so I'll get. Doesn't really matter. Guess I'll foretell. Can at least do something. Um, we can Haro and Roiling Regrowth if we hit an untapped land, because these come in untapped, and these come in tapped. And they're both instant, too, which is funny. This is the worst counterspell to get countered, though. I mean, worst counterspell to get countered. The worst uh, thing to have get countered. I am going to cast it now, though. Crack this... And get blue black untapped so I can thought eraser right now. Oh, of course. Well, well no, I'm not gonna scoop yet. I'm gonna scoop. We're out of this. There's no coming back from that probably. Could keep going, but I'm not drawing a land next turn, and I can thought eraser something that our opponent has in hand, but discarding to Uro is not a good feeling. And there's a chance we don't hit a land, and now we're just done. <laughs> That's funny. I said it was a good matchup, and uh... I mean, I could have waited. I, I legit could have waited and not went for my uh... Sorcery Speed Haro. Maybe that was a little aggressive. Waited till they tap for Uro, and Played around less things, it would have been like spell pierce, and that was about it. I didn't have to worry about. Yeah, it was, it was definitely a different way to play that. Looks like we get a, looks like we get a redo. Another Golos player. Um. You got this notification? There you go. Alright, we'll do this on green? I guess. Interesting they're cycling that. I feel like this is a very good card when you expect me to go for my commander as quickly as possible. And then this can be red or white. I guess it'll be red because that's what I have in hand. Okay. There's actually a double-edged sword when it looks like you're holding up a counterspell because I'd rather not look like I'm holding a counterspell so they just go for something like this. Okay, that's good. Because, you know, there might be a chance like, oh, they're just going to draw go when I'd rather our opponent tap out. So we have blue, black. Uh, this is red, so in the cold steel heart is green, so we need white. Okay, we can actually cast um, the Prismatic Bridge. Okay, good. They played a forest, too, so there's no Spell Pierce nonsense here. It is a blue-green deck, so they might have stuff like Wilt, which would be really annoying. Wait, I can cast this, right? Green, white, red, blue, black. Okay, they cycled a Veil of Summer. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, please don't have one of the four decent answers. Okay, that's good. We in business. Wow, they actually got Uro online that fast. That is really, really fast. Wow. I didn't even realize. I thought it was in the command zone. They just did that. Okay, that's unfortunate. That would have been really good one turn earlier. <laughs> uh, are we doing it? I mean, yeah, I guess we're doing it. Their Fabled Passage doesn't work. I can kill... No, I can't kill a rogue, can I? I guess I'll just do this and leave up Negate. 
Yeah, that seems fine. Hopefully they crack this Fabled Passage and fail to find. They do not. Rip. I should have played this first, because now they discard a card that I can't, like, do anything about. Play this as a... Doesn't matter at this point. No, I don't think it really matters. I guess if I draw a uh, Mardu Ultimatum, I'd like to have, like, the white and red. Because I think I have enough blue and black. Yeah, let's just do white. Spectral Sailor? That's a different one. We can negate something spicy. Do I defend my... Do I defend this or do I not care? I don't think I care. I don't feel like I should care. I think I'm going to just do this. Because we're going to get another thing off of Essica. Or the Prismatic Bridge. Ho oh, ho. Excuse me. Yeah, Spectral Sailor. This is a weird one. Alright, well, never mind. I guess nothing matters because our opponent played that card. What a fun card that is, huh? I have literally no answer in my deck. I can kill this, but I don't think there's a way for me to get my commander back, so that's boring. Good old Agent of Treachery. If my negate was a... Essence Scatter, I guess we would have been a good spot. I hate that card so much. <laughs> oh, I hate that card. Oh my god. Oh, it wasn't even on my radar, to be honest. I didn't even, like... I didn't even think about it as a, a possible thing to happen. Okay, well, moving on. We have Confounding Conundrum against Golos, which is really nice. Uh, we have an untapped source turn two. I really don't want to use it that quickly, but I feel like I want this in play really fast. So let's just play this and then turn to Aether Hub. Stop them from ramping. It doesn't turn off mana dorks, but it does turn off a few other things that we like. And it draws a card, so it's not like that bad. But a turn two colorless source is not great. Ooh, don't do anything. Okay. We'll play that. We'll play this. Alpine Meadow? Okay. Oh, it's a Minotaur. Yep. I played this and uh, all their ramp spells turned into mana rocks in their hand. I'm like, oh, shoot. Don't worry, I just sneezed. I didn't actually cheat. I think I'm actually going to Swords to Plowshares that Druid. Because I am running this out. This is happening. Yep, I'm going to Swords this. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, it's a land. Um, we're going to choose... Oh, my. This is colorless. I guess I don't have any... Do I really not have any blue? What? Oh, I have it here. There's blue here. So I can do this and still leave up a counterspell. Okay. Wow. They didn't play any ramp spells and they hit... Wow. They got Golos mana that fast. Alright. Um, I really wish I could draw this, but I can't. Um, can I Assassin's Trophy and cast my commander? No. I feel like I need to deal with this 
Golos now. I really probably should not have sword to plowshares that other thing I swords to plowshared. It's probably a bit of a mistake there, to be honest. Yeah, I'm starting to feel it now. I suppose I have to Assassin's Trophy, though. And then keep them off of their commander for as long as possible. Yep. I have to do this now, because they can activate on their turn at any point. They can do it in their, like, their upkeep or whatever. Okay. Yep. Losing to the uh, old war criminals of the format. Yeah. Ulamog. Okay. I guess I have to counter that. We can come back from an Ulamog, because it's not in play. So that's really nice. But now I can't really cast anything, because I... Oh, well, no, I can cast this, actually. Yeah, we can cast this. Blow up the Chromatic Lantern. I can play this next turn, or I can play this. This doesn't really do much when your opponent has infinite zombies. So I guess I won't do that. Uh, let's, let's get this. Yeah, I think I'm just going to do this. That kills my commander. Oh, this is the longest I think I've had Augur in play, and I, I'm not getting any lands off the top. I can play one of these. I don't. It doesn't feel like they're doing much. I can't say that they are. I guess I'll just kick this. <laughs> I think I could have played this differently. I had counter spells and answers to this, and I just didn't use them. Like, I I don't know. I probably just... I, I kind of faded my... Really? No land? Oh, my God. Oh... No, I'm going to move on. There's... It's whatever. They're doing the same thing I'd be doing, except they get three cards instead of one. So I, I can't... I can't keep up. I should have sourced the Plowshares Golos. Absolutely. I really don't know what I was thinking. The swordsing their mana's work would have been good if they didn't have the mana to cast Golos at the time, but they already did. Like, they played two things that got around my confounding conundrum. So they could cast Golos early. And obviously Assassin's Trophy and Golos doesn't actually do anything because they get the land that they need to cast it again. Okay. Keenan. Except they're on the play. Which makes this way harder. This is a very dirty commander. <laughs> Keenan is disgust. Like, when you're on the play, I can't even essence scatter. Because it comes in too fast. I can't do it. Like, it's just not fast enough. Also, this hand isn't... It's, it's not great. Can't even thought see as a commander, either. Oh, Bolas' Citadel's in this deck? It shouldn't be in here. I might replace this with something. I don't, I don't even know why I put this in here. Essica can't hit artifacts. I mean, it's a good card otherwise. It's still a good card. Um, yeah, this is fine. I don't see ourselves getting that much better of a hand, so... I kind of want to turn one Thoughtseize. 
take that. Okay, we took their mana dork. That's pretty good. They only had one. The rest of their hand is actually really, really bad. Uh, play this. Yeah. Okay, that was a good draw. Does it let me... No, it doesn't let me immediately do anything. I mean, if they spark double their commander, I'm pretty sure we're not upset. I can get one of these guild gates, and I probably will. No, you know, I should get an untap source for, like, later. Yeah, that seems nice. For when I need it. Play this. They're just looking like, should I uh, spark double my commander? Okay, so we play this. Can I can't wait? White, any color. Blue, black, green. So I can cast this. This is really good. All right, we'll do this. I don't even know why they kept this hand. Just for for a single mana dork seems a little little loose. Yeah, that seemed a little weird. We also drew Agent of Treachery, so even if they were able to do something dirty, we could just steal it with the uh, best card in the format. <laughs> okay. So, so far it feels like these matchups have been a little bit polarizing and not, not too back and forth. I like keeping sketchy hands when I have a brainstorm. I even have a search for Sconces. Maybe this isn't that bad. We gotta remember what we're up against. Um, something that kills us pretty fast. And we're on the draw. I mean, what more am I asking for? Probably at least one ramp spell. Probably. And this is... This is arguably way worse oh man I might no I, I don't think I can keep that that seems crazy okay this is good I can get rid of solve the equation I really like solve the equation it's really good they can kind of get any it's almost a just a tutor like yeah you can't get permanents lands and planeswalkers and enchantments but you can get instant sorceries like you can get Mardu Ultimatum, Sultai Ultimatum. I'm going to keep this and put that back. I think I want more ramp than I want anything specific. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe... No, I think that's fine. A handful of ramp is probably what our opponent has, so... Okay. Oh... Uh... I love this Ornithopter, too. I'm glad someone played it against me and I learned about its existence. Opponent did not cast their commander, nor did they cast a Mana Dork. That is very suspect. Okay, and they also... It's not a Flash creature, it's not a Growth Spiral. I really don't care if I get this... If this gets countered, I don't think I care. Okay. I don't know why they didn't go for their commander. That seems very strange. Okay, we obviously, it's totally fine when they cast ramp spells and not mana dorks. So that is A-OK. -okay. Could have been holding up like Tails End. I really, I don't know. I don't know what you would want a Tails End on my second turn. Okay, so we already have three mana, so I can play a tap land this turn. I really don't want this to get countered. Oh wait, this is not the, I thought this was the instant one. This is fine. That one's fine. I don't care if that one gets countered. But here, I'm probably just going to play the Relic. Yeah, we're just going to play the Relic. Not kick it, obviously. So we have the mana to cast our commander. 
It looks a bit wonky, but... Nissa? Alright, so... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think they were holding up something to... Posture? Okay, they did untap a blue and not a green. I guess I can play around a sense. No, I don't have to play. They have one blue mana. I don't care. Let's see, we can play this first. No, this can't help me cast it. This won't help me cast it. I have to tap the Ornithopter no matter what, so... They had a Spell Pierce. Wow. Okay. I'm not going to lie. I walked right into that. Opponent says, good game. I guess the game's over because they Spell Pierce my commander. Okay. We have a good Casualties of War if we hit a land. I guess they did leave up Spell Pierce that early, uh, trying to counter anything but a Menadork, so I got luck I got a bit lucky with that, I guess. Okay, now we have to deal with a 10-10. Does it have ward whatever? No. I can just kill it normally. I don't know if I should. I might have to kill Keenan. Oh, I can just cast this anyways. I keep forgetting <laughs> Ornithopter of Paradise isn't playing this doing things. Okay, so we got land, planeswalker, creature, artifact. Oh, there's only one artifact, so we're not doing that. Okay, creature. We'll kill the 10 10 so we don't die. And then a land we can kill. Doesn't really matter which one. I suppose I'll kill the blue one. And then I'll kill you. I assume our opponent had a counter spell and they just like sorcery speed did this and it kind of blew them out, I imagine. Okay. Um that was a decent draw. Now I can cast my commander again. Do I have to kill Keenan right now? I feel like I should kill Keenan so they can't instantly activate it. But, I mean, I'm just going to keep doing that over and over, and I'm not really getting anything done. I'm just going to run this out. Siren Storm Tamer. Huh. That's uh, unexpected. Okay. Ashiok is not great. They can defend it with their Siren Storm Tamer. So I guess I'm going to do this. I don't think I really care if this gets counterspelled. I think I'll just lead with this, though. I'd rather... Yeah. Oh, sweet. Alright, so they just sort of countered the first thing I did. That is totally fine. Um, yeah, we're gonna just Masterminds Inquisition then. Look for... What's the best card against our opponent in this spot? Probably Agent of Treachery, which is really unfortunate. But I guess that's... I mean, that's the card. You know, that's the one. Feel like I want it in play. Now, it means Essica can't cheat it into play. So it's one less target. Other word, otherwise, I can get... Um, a counter no counter spells aren't great when they have their commander specifically in play. Mardu ultimatum's kind of hard to have happen. Yeah, I think we're gonna go for Asian treachery. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's probably it's probably just what I have to do. We are under a little bit of pressure, but not an insane amount of pressure. They're doing this sorcery speed is good. We we want that. All right, that's really good. And they whiffed. Nice. All right, opponent said good game twice, and it looks like we're sort of back in this. 
They might even scoop if I cast this. Wait, wait. We wait till we do this. Okay, I guess not. Good game. I was going to say we wait till we're, we fill their graveyard up as many cards as possible before we activate it. <laughs> Opponent said good game and... <laughs> I assumed they tapped out on their turn and didn't have Counterspell for Casualties of War, allowing us to get back in the game. And then uh, from there, they start like desperation activating Keenan instead of... I mean, still should have done it at instant speed. There's no real reason to not do that, you know. Should still do it at instant speed. Because you leave up your mana and I have to... I have to actually think. You know, I don't just play my most optimal things if they, you know... Kind of interesting. But yeah, we turned that game around with the Casualties of War. That was pretty cool. As a card, we can't cheat into uh, cheat onto the stack with our commander. Because the commander only gets creatures and enchantment? No, creatures and planeswalkers. Alright, this hand... Um, oh, this, this Aether Hub is killing me, dude. No, no, no. Okay, this is better. This is better. I'll play this for either red or white. I guess there's a little bit more red than there's white in my deck. Okay, this is also a five-color deck, so... Do we want to put this on blue? Yes, because we have enough green. We put this on blue. It also allows us to cast Search, which means we hopefully won't miss land drops. Though we're, it's not too bad if we do at this point. Kind of have enough ramp in hand. Really wish these were not in my hand though. But that's what makes Brainstorm great. That's also good. That's also good. I like that. And I will cast that as my first one in the face of a counter spell. Because it only gets one kind of land here. Um, Do we want to loot? I think so. I think we're going to loot this. All right, that was a good draw. So they shocked themselves for something that didn't stop a field trip. So it could be a Tails End or Counter Target Enchantment or Artifact or something like that. Or maybe even an Essence Scatter. Man, these five color decks are so, so consistent. It's, it's insane. It's insane how often uh, people get their turn five, like five color commander in play. In, in historic like regular commander I can see it but this is like this is just it's insane how consistent it is okay I think I should just get red white and not mess around with it just get that out of the way for the rest of the game because the soul tie lands are the vast majority of my lands I did have a land that tapped for white already but this way it just makes it a little bit harder for them to blow it up or something they're sniffing my graveyard. They're mousing over my graveyard. Get out of there. It's my graveyard. At this point, they sort of have to keep up mana to posture. Well, they could have an answer to my commander, honestly. They are that. Uh, I think we're done with lands. I think we're done with lands. Nope, I guess we're not done with lands. Okay, we're going to kick this. I am very unupset if this gets countered. Sure. And then I'll play this and play this. I could have paid for it, actually, but... I mean, okay. I think we'll live. Let's see, what do we want? Green? Maybe I just want blue? Blue seems fine. What I really want is Field of the Dead. Alright, Windmill your commander, please. Their commander will, might have to make them draw discard. Uro, okay. So they manually tapped for this Uro back to this exact two lands they had in an earlier turn to probably leave up a counter spell. I could just go for this giant. I don't want to lose to Fairy, and I really do she wasn't going into my hand, but oh well. So do I cast the giant or do I cast Vraska? 
I feel like whatever it is they're leaving up counters non-creatures, and I'd like to get it out of the way so I can cast my commander. And of these two Planeswalkers, this one is definitely the least scary. I think. It kills niv -Mizzet instantly, but if they play land, cast niv -Mizzet, they're still leaving up two mana, and I still have to deal with whatever it is. Alright, we'll just go for this. We'll force it out. We're going to force it out. Okay, that is not what we, we wanted to see. I wanted to see whatever that other card was. That's unfortunate. I also maybe should have held on to Teferi, so if I drew an untap... Well, I mean, even this flipping, actually, would mean I could double two... I could double five drop. So that may have been a little bit of a misplay. Knight of Autumn. Okay. That was the last possible chance they had to blow that up, too. And they are still leaving... Oh, they're not leaving up any mana. And they also played this. So this is the best time to really go for this. And I'm going to do it. Negate was a huge pickup, too. It doesn't stop this, but it stops probably most things I don't want to see. Which, it, that is one of them. Alright, we're in this spot now. Opponent got a Dovin's Veto. I should have looked at the rest of them. I don't. I just didn't do that. Prismari, Prismari Command. Rip Apart. Oh, they got a Rip Apart. Oh, they got a Rip Apart. Got a Rip Apart and a Dovin's Veto, which are the big ones that I don't want to see. I think I'm going to minus on niv -Mizzet, honestly. Because otherwise, we're not in a good spot. Yeah, we're just going to do this. Whoop. They can recast it, but I think that's probably fine. I'm not going to play this land. So what do we have here? Do they have any way to deal with this Beanstalk Giant? Doesn't look like it. They can rip apart, then Dovin's Veto, so I'm not really going to have my commander for 20 years. Yep. They kind of have to do that. Beanstalk Giant, unfortunately, does not have... Oh, okay, well, they just have that. I was going to say, it doesn't have Reach, but I guess it doesn't matter now. I literally lost everything, and they have Dovin's Veto up. So we probably lost this game. Well, i got to push through it, so I'm going to keep playing stuff. Here I will play a land. Uh, red, doesn't matter. niv is it, it actually costs 5 mana because they didn't move it to the command zone. Doesn't look like they're going to go for it though. I guess there's no reason to... I think I'd still... I think I definitely would have went for nip I think I would have cast nip -Mizzet. Just so I can have started massing cards. When your opponent doesn't look like they have... Oh! Is that good? Do we want that? No, I think we want this in play. Agent's a good draw, but it doesn't... It's not really stealing anything noteworthy. At least not in my opinion. Stealing Uros... I kind of want to steal niv -Mizzet so I don't get killed by it. What is this, Casualties of War? Of course, it's Casualties of War. Alright, well, now I pretty much have to steal Uro, but it's not doing much. But, I mean, I, if I don't, I die. Oh. Okay, I'm almost certainly still dead anyways. 
Um, I can still Niv miss it. Nope, we're just dead. Oh, yeah, they just had way too many answers for my commander, which isn't super super likely in a five color deck. Like rip apart, okay, I can see that one. Casualties of war, yeah, I can see that one. They don't have wilt because they want every card to be like two colors, so they don't have wilt. They could have cinder vines, but I really doubt they have cinder vines. They probably had two to four. Uh, solid answers and they had two of them there and they had Dovin's veto that I couldn't I really just couldn't do anything about at all I couldn't play around it I just had to run into it that's just unfortunate I feel like we were in a good spot too if this just stayed for like one if it was just in play for just a little bit longer because their five color deck kind of like Golos immediately gets a ton of value um, it's not free value, but it is value. This basically has to be green. Yeah, this has to be green. I don't think I've ever played against Omnath using that art. That's cool. That's really cool looking. I like that. I've never seen that evolving models either. The D&D &D thingies. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, so we can't leave up Essence Scatter, and I don't think I would anyways. Ujin, the big one. <laughs> Phylath. Uh, that's fine. Okay. Um, I suppose... This deals with my commander. I don't know how many ways that I can do that. So I feel like I really need to deal with this. It's kind of like one of those... One of those hands where we don't... I don't care about the rest of it. Like, I would like to take this regrowth. But they have so many of that effect in their deck it's not really doing much taking it i'd rather take a card that at some point will just reset the board and blow out everything i've strived for all right well if there was ever a time to top make a land that was the time azusa was almost not going to do anything oh you gotta be kidding me <laughs> azusa almost didn't do anything there actually Okay. So Azusa, next turn will have effectively done nothing. At this point, I think we can scoop. Even if we start drawing lands, I... Uh, like next turn, if we start drawing lands, I don't think... I can't do anything. Phylath will just kill us at that point, honestly. I don't even need to cast their commander. The Phylath plant tokens and do it for them. Oh no, it's Baral. Oh god. So even if I do somehow finagle a way to get my commander in play, they have bounce spells and it's not doing much. And also the things I cheat into play aren't necessarily the strongest against my uh, opponent's deck. But I guess we're going to try. So green-blue... We can explore turn two. That's one of the few things that we can do, right? Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, no. Maybe this should just be a land. Maybe I should just take this out and spite. Spite it. Land, please? I can get a land with the open gates and then just... Nope, I'm not going to play this game. There's... I don't think I can ever beat this. I don't think we can ever beat that. Maybe if I got Explore to hit a land there, and then I drew a land, and then I instantly could cast a 4-minute rent spell. If I was, like, really... If I had the most optimal opener, maybe. But, no, there's, there's really no way. I couldn't, at that point, even really avoid the soft counters you know making those like dead spells or making it they have to cast two of them on one spell so we can sort of keep up but it's it's just not happening not when i not when i uh i'm not super explosive i'm not fast enough we were on the play too so we had everything in our favor it just was it's not good enough I don't think I've ever played against Krenko. 
that's kind of cool. Um, I wonder if Cranko's better than Muxus? Probably, because you it's all one of. It probably is better than Muxus. I don't know. I'd, I'd need a consensus on that one there. Probably is, though. Comes into play early. If you have any sort of haste, it's really good. This is the best goblin, and they have it, so that is not good for us at all. We'll play this and uh, this. If there was ever a goblin we did not want to see, it would be this one. This is the best goblin. <laughs> if you could make this your commander, <laughs> you probably would. Skirk Prospector. Wow, no two men to play, though. Okay. Ooh, feel, feels weird milling this over. I think we want that. Play this, and these are both instant, right? Yep, yeah, alright, some spells. We do have an answer to this prospector, which is really nice. Our opponent lightning strikes our face. I think that is a good sign if I were to take a wild shot in the dark. Looks like they yet again do not have anything. Oh, wait, what's this? Okay, they have the other Cranko. Sure. I will get a black. So we have all the colors red. We actually can cast our commander. Is it good enough? I don't know. Do I have to deal with this? Attacks, put a counter on it, then put it as equal to the Cranko's power. Is my commander good enough right now? Probably. Because otherwise, I'm just binding the prospect. No, we're just doing this. We gotta be we gotta be fast. And now we gotta bank on getting some good spice. Like Agent of Treachery stealing Cranko would be good. Okay, so now they have borderline omniscience. What is what is this? Oh. Siege gang commander. Well, okay. Like I said, the best possible goblin is this one, and I don't know what I can do about it. I thought I was thinking about blowing it up last turn, but I guess I didn't. So I pretty much lose. This is it's so it's so disgusting. That's just such a absurdly powerful. It's like the most powerful uh mana source if you're a goblin deck right it's just oh <laughs> oh what you gotta be kidding me dude what do i do like this is a 10 10 this is basically an 11 11 this is infinite mana well this is infinite mana Pff, okay yep i mean all right sure yeah, you win some, you lose some. In hindsight, I should have binded the Prospector. That was what I was debating doing, but I didn't do it. I was kind of hoping they would just cast their commander next turn and, and not do anything else, but, I mean, silly me. Yeah, that game would have been completely different if they, uh... In fact, it would have been maybe even fine if I hit Ornithopter off of my commander. Just, just the fact that Prospector was turn one... That, that's it. No, nothing mattered from then, then on. This is such a disgusting... I wonder if you mulligan for that every game. You're not super unlikely to hit it. It is... It truly is on another level. And you would absolutely play it as your commander if you could. This will be blue. So we're against another extremely aggressive deck. This one's probably more aggressive than the last one. More aggressive, slightly less explosive. Choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn. One one becomes a coward. Trample. Okay. So we're going to play Ornithopter. Yes. I guess we're not. Okay, we're going to 
play this on. Uh, what did I name with this? I named blue. So this can be red or white. I guess red? And then I'll do this. Yeah, this is not looking good. I really needed that ornithopter. Because now we're just wait. We might just be dead now, actually. Like, they swing for a bunch. Then next turn, we take double damage from everything, basically. Uh, there's no... St I can pay two to agonize and remorse something, but what I want to discard is in the command zone. I can't touch it. I also don't want to pay two life, but I also don't think it matters. No, we're just dead. They play their commander and they swing twice. We're dead. We're not doing anything for two turns. We're we're actually literally dead. <laughs> like, I play a land, they swing for 12 or 8 or whatever, and then next turn I play my commander and they swing for 12 or 8, and I'm dead. I kind of forgot Essica had some really bad hits like that Ornithopter. I didn't I didn't assess that when I made the deck. Maybe I should take out... Is there still time? Take out some of these earlier things. But I don't know what I put in place of them. Because you don't really want colorless mana rocks and stuff. Because you need to get Essica out pretty fast if you want this to do whatever it is you want it to do. So, As much as I really like this Ornithopter, I'm going to take it out. I'm not... I mean, I could take out Uro and stuff, too, because that early on is not great. I mean, even this Ashiok, which I've hit quite often, um, is not great to hit off of your commander. It's not really doing that much. You really want Essica to swing the game. So what I might do is take out some of these earlier things. Uro, that... Um... What I hmm. wasn't there something else in here that yeah auger take out auger apparently I had auger in play for like five turns and it hit like one land it just got super unlucky so there we go so now we have way better hits I mean I could take out the scholar too because you need again you need something in your graveyard for that to be good first and I could add more good planeswalkers maybe. Um, Ujin. It doesn't have to be colored, right? It can be... Yeah, I can put Ujin in. Ujin probably should have been in the deck anyways. Ulamog is a strange one, because you don't get the cast trigger. But he has a 10-10 Indestructible, which I understand is uh, pretty solid. This Kaya is better than I think. Just the minus seems solid. I'll, I'll toss that in. The small Ujin is also pretty solid, honestly. I don't like the format of Raska, I don't think. Professor Onyx seems good, too. Okay, and then what I could do is maybe... Add some board wipes. Because now we don't have any connection to the board. Yes, that's how you spell all. Right, we have no way to stick to the board ourselves so we're not totally opposed to I've never drawn on a promise have I no, no. doing something like this right we need more white sources if we're going to do that I think double white isn't super hard to get but that would mean I probably want another um, white source white basic in the in the deck yeah probably I have been unimpressed with Confounding Conundrum, so I'll take that out. Add uh, another board wipe, I guess, Day of Judgment. I don't know how many I want, honestly. Could probably take out Eureka Moment for another sweeper. Seems fine. Um, Ritual of Slits, sketchy, but I don't have a lot of options, and I like to keep it, oh, this one's not, nah, nah, that one's not great. I guess Doomscar, let's just do Doomscar. Okay, so now we'll add another 
plains. Guess it'll be a snow plains. Take out a... I don't like this Aether Hub. It's been upsetting me. I'm going to take out the Aether Hub. Let's try it like that. Oh, I'm already pushing an hour. Oh my god. Alright, this hasn't been a great showing. I could work on this more. Go back to the drawing board. The Sultai shell with the splashiness doesn't seem like it's as good as it would be in Golos. And my deck is slowly walking away from that. So I need to go back to the drawing board probably. The sweepers don't even do anything against decks that don't commit to the board, but I guess it's still slightly better than just these hosh posh early creatures that aren't doing much that would still die to whatever your opponent's doing. Or just hit with your commander and you feel really bad. But now you get hands like this, where I have no early early game, and I'm just banking on ramping into Essica to then cheat things into play. So we're not going to keep this. Oh god. I have green. I just need one land and this hand is alright. Okay. Leyline of Abundance. Sure, I guess. Your mana dark's already tapped for two though. It doesn't do anything. Alright, well I guess it does it do something? Does this work with your commander? I'm about to find out. Drew the land. Still tapped though, so... Blue. We have all five colors in play turn two. That's, that's kind of cool. I guess it lets them skip their commander. Vivian Reed blows up my commander, which is uh, bad. Okay, we drew an untapped land. Nice. And I can cultivate for black, 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 or black, eh, black, blue. I don't think I'm going to win this, actually. I think I need, like, casualties of war to come out of this. Like, at this point, they just... They have, like, infinite mana. They're drawing two cards. They're drawing three cards a turn. Oh, wait. Does this one draw? It can draw sometimes. Okay, well... Vivian Reed, I have to answer before I go for my commander anyways. So, that's unfortunate. I think we're just dead, though. I'll let them blow this up with Vivian Reed. I, that's fine. Probably don't even care about it, honestly. Yeah, I didn't think so. Vorna clicks. Okay, well, that's not good. And then they double it. Yep, nope, we're out. It's hard to even play counter spells too, because you want, you want some things Essica hits, right? Like, it's hard to have ramp spells, counter spells, sweepers, and big bombs for Essica to do something. This is a weird commander. It's, I don't know. I could be approaching this entirely wrong. And though, to be fair, I mean, I, I don't know what I could do against a ley line triple mana dork. Or mana dorks that tap for, like, three or something like that. I'm pretty sure it taps for three. It's like when it taps it, they tap for... I don't know how Keenan reads. Is it tap for an additional, or is it tap for twice its base amount? Which means they would tap for four. I don't know the exact text. So in the mirror, if their deck is anything like ours, we can wait for a while and do nothing. And hope we uh, do things good enough. Agent of Treachery is the best card in the matchup, probably. So I suppose I will keep that. Okay. This end of the north needs to really carry me. Uh, yep, I'm going to cast it right now. I'll get... 
I need blue. Yeah, I need blue. I drew the one snow land that would have been really good to hit off of it, but oh well. Alright, um, play this. Okay, well, I mean, do they actually already have it? Blue. Okay, so... What is this? Jess guy? No, this is Teamer. So, red, blue... So, blue, white, red, green, black. So, this could be black and it would work? Yes. And I pass. Terror of the Peaks is an interesting one. Okay. I guess we're going to learn how to build this deck in about two seconds. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> come on. Oh, come on. Uh, hey, they hit a Minidork. Okay, so they have things in their deck that are really bad to hit. I guess this sort of undoes it, right? Because you get a little bit of something out of it when you slam them with this. Okay, that makes an 8-8, and then it active treasons, or it steals something. I'm also just instantly dead, because Terror of the Peaks dealt 28 damage to me. Oh, never mind. All is forgiven. So do I minus 7, or do I just not do anything? I feel like I sort of, like, have to minus 7. So I don't lose the game. Take action. I can't recast it. Um, so do I cast this? I think I will, because this prevents them from even... Uh, ye yeah, and then I'll plus it. No, we're going to minus on... Think about this. No, we're just going to plus. We're going to plus. I was going to minus on that minute rock, but this just sitting in play means they're not able to use their... Commander. Pretty sure you just minus, you know, probably what you're going to do. I'll discard something that's probably not good, which is Bolus' Citadel. I can't even use it anymore. Don't have enough life. That is annoying. But, no, we think we're just going to pass. Well, I suppose I should do this now, just so I don't have to discard. Oh, uh, yeah sacrifice the island for a blue and a black or blue white we don't have double white for wrath of god it'd be nice to blow up the tokens they make and i probably wanted at some point anyway so yeah let's get double white and then pass because i can't do anything They scry a card to the top. That is bad news bears. Ren and seven. I'll just put that on top. I gotta cast this before it's too late. I would really like to agent a treachery their commander, but might not have the time for that. So now what? Leave up Disdainful Stroke? We're going to start losing to their... Losing to the board, though. I think I'm going to run this out, actually. And I think I'm going to... Plus? Yeah, we're just going to plus. I don't think I'm upset losing... Getting two cards milled, I don't think. I want Kaya to hit their commander. I want them to go for it. I don't think I care about Renan 7. Especially if they just make a big thing. They do make a big thing. Okay. They do not bounce my Kaya. I mean my Liliana. Alright, this game got really weird. So I'm going to lose this zombie no matter what. I might as well block with it. Because I have to minus 2 my... I guess I don't have to minus 2, but I... I I still draw cards when my stuff dies, so. 
just want to hit a land. If I get the World Tree soon, I can even Emergent Ultimatum, which would probably be really... Oh my god. <laughs> that was really bad. Okay, so I can sweep the board and then do nothing. I'm just... Oh, I'm falling behind. Like, I'm not... The reoccurring board presence is a bit of a problem right now. I can sweep the board and plus Liliana. Yeah, that's that's what we gotta do. We just sweep the board plus Liliana. And leave up Disdainful Stroke. I can cycle Migration's Path, too. Doesn't seem like I'm gonna find time to ever cast it, so... Opponent has Shark Typhoon. Interesting. You can't hit that off your commander. They're bouncing Liliana? Really? Okay. Um, Zatulpa can go bye-bye car. That was an interesting decision. It was getting close to ultimating, but... Now we can just kill Ashiok. Oh, I guess we can't necessarily, because they do have a token with the castle. I don't feel like I'll ever have time to cast this, because... Alright, that was a, a decent draw, if any. I think I'm fine if they just tap all out to make a token. That Okay. Seems fine. I don't even think I like Castle Ardenville in this deck. But they, they're probably more 5 color than we are. No, they're really actually going to do that. Okay, that is totally fine. I don't care. Uh, Ruinous Ultimatum was an interesting draw. It means we can sort of let things go a little bit more. Um, so do we do Kai or do we just go back for Liliana? I think it's safe to say they have no... <sighs> yeah, we're just going to windmill this. Because now we have Agent of Treachery meta, and they can essentially give us the commander. Alright, so we're going to exile probably Ashiok, because Renin 7 doesn't do much when you have a ton of lands already. In fact, I can see an argument for just making a giant token. Because putting lands in your hand is not really doing much. I mean, they can zero it and put some tap lands into play, but again, you're not really getting anywhere with that. It's also just dead on board. So if they go for their commander and plus Ren and Seven, it, they're actually just not doing much. So it makes sense to just make a token. It's a token that could literally kill me, so, like, I have to be wary of it. Yep, this makes this makes sense. I would do this. Now we're dead to, like, a one-sided sweeper. We're dead to some removal. Um, I really need to Agent of Treachery, their commander. So if they have, like... They have something that's castable. They haven't casted it in a while. Or ever, obviously, they... I don't know what it is, but I don't think it's a counter spell. So we're going to just plus on a non-token. Ah, rip. Oh, I guess we're just plusing on nothing. And then I'll... I mean, I could have plussed on this, actually. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, Zatulpa's the most underwhelming card. Yeah, I know. So if this doesn't work, we're in a really bad spot. But if it does, we're in a very good spot. That's kind of how this card operates all right so now i'm starting to think it's like an oh did we win no it's just return to nature that's okay opponent saying good game i don't know why i don't see why this game looks like it's over 
Oh my god, they gave it flying? What was this list? That's insane. Wow. So we came back with a timely Ujin and then I Whoa. Oh, dude, who plays these cards? That's why you play those cards. You know, you make a token, your opponent's like, whatever, I'll just chump block it forever. And then you're like, ha. Huh. <laughs> Literally, I. <laughs> oh, dude, I don't know. Oh, dude, not like that. GG to that opponent, dude. GG. That list was definitely more interesting than mine. It's so interesting, I think I might try this deck again, doing some crazy stuff, I guess. Uh, uh, clearly, Zatulpa is slightly under... I mean, what's Zatulpa? Zatulpa would have, like, made me not die to that. That's kind of cool. I think I'm going to keep this in until I get him in play, and then I'll get I'll take him out. He's going he's, he's gonna to enter the board once before he leaves. I want him in play. I definitely have things in here that are unimpressive. Like, these two creatures, I just don't see them being that good of hits when Essek is in play. Like, this isn't that great. Uh, it is just creature or planeswalker, yeah. So our opponent had Kiara best the sea god, which is something you cannot hit. Actually, they had a lot of things you can't hit with their commander, um, and they cast it. We were very, very far away from ever casting Ruinous Ultimatum. We never drew Hour of Promise. Um, I don't even... I don't think I ever drew a Grim Tutor either. There would have been times where that would have been a nice card to have so I could get something good. What else did I just never see, like, ever? I never saw a Nickel Bolas. I had this one in hand, but I don't think I was able to cast it because the color is too demanding. And I don't think in that spot it would have been that great. Bolus' Citadel can probably come out. It is a very good card, but um, it can probably be something else. I don't really know what, though. It seems as though having payoffs for all your ramp um, outside of your commander is decent. So you still have other things to do. You can also cast the things in your hand anyways, because Essica can't cast those. Unless you brainstorm them, which we never did. I'll give you a handful of gas and you just Essica, you know, brainstorm, put it back on top. And um, We also never drew... There were never times where I had, like... It was always either leave up a counterspell or tap out for something that was decent. It was never both, which makes Keenan just better because you can do both at the same time and this can't do that. This is very... It's much more difficult to deal with, but it seems as though there's times where your opponent can almost ignore it. Um, or just blow it up with a couple disenchant spells, but for the most part, it really is just uh, counter spells you got to worry about. Or just dying to, like, a mono-red deck. That last game was very interesting. I liked that last game. I was really hoping I was going to win it, too, and they just... They came out of left field with the... Like... What else in their deck do they want to enchant? Because it obviously is not just a Renin 7 token. So I kind of wish the game lasted a little bit longer so I could see a little bit more of their deck. That dragon dealt so much damage to me, um, and it did wind up mattering. It wasn't a game where it was massively swingy and, you know, someone just explodes all in one turn and kills you. It was like a grind fest, which you don't see too often. It usually is... You just have a blowout turn and win. But they solved... They dealt with uh, the Asian Treachery. Not only did they blow up their own commander, which was not necessary, they also just won the game. Um, yeah, our opponent's deck was very weird. But I like it. And I'll I'll take some of the... I'll take a different 
avenue and outlook when I come back to this deck next time. But anyways, that's enough rambling. Uh, put the deck list in the description below, and that will be that for now. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.